In this lecture, I'm going to discuss the hypoxian muscle that's found in the abdominal region. And specifically, I will talk about the abdominal muscle. As I said before, the abdominal muscle, we have four muscle. We have the external abdominal oblique. We have the internal abdominal oblique. We have the transverse abdominal muscle. And finally, we have the rectus abdominal muscle. So we'll start to talk about the first muscle, which is the external abdominal oblique. This one extend from the reps area and the lumbar region, the coastal area and the lumbar region. And we can see here their fibers are run in the caudoventral orientation. Okay, so the external have two parts. Part start from the coastal region and part start from the lumbar region, and their fibers runs on the caudo ventrally. This muscle or this muscle has aponeurosis, and their aponeurosis inserted in the linea alba. The caudal portion, this muscle, the aponeurosis of this muscle is called inguinal ligament. So the external abdominal oblique, the fibers runs caudoventrally. This muscle has two portion, costal portion and lumbar region, and both of them inserted in the linea alba, which is the midline that we can see here in the middle of the rectus abdominal muscle. This line is called linea alba. The other muscle we have, it is the internal abdominal oblique muscle and its fiber we can see it here run in the opposite direction for the external abdominal oblique the fiber runs in the cranio ventral orientation again this muscle has aponeurosis and this aponeurosis inserted again in the linea alba the third muscle we have is the transverse abdominal muscle, and we can see the fibers straight runs from the dorsal to the ventral portion. And usually, this muscle, we can see the branches of the lumbar nerve, the medial branches of the lumbar nerves. You can see here, this is the internal abdominal oblique, and here we have the transverse abdominal. And these white lines are the medial branch of the lumbar nerve. Again, this muscle will insert in the linea alba. What's the linea alba? Linea alba is elongated, tendinous structure, extend along the ventral median for the full length of the abdomen from the xiphoid cartilage toward the pubic bone. So this is the area of the xiphoid bone and caudally we have the pubic bone. This line extend from the xiphoid bone and toward the pubic bone. This is a tendinous structure. Its means have the same characteristics of a tendon, which is dense irregular, dense regular connective tissue. Usually we use the linea alba as a site for the entry in the abdomen because at this area here, usually the tendons has low blood supply and nerve supply. So we are not afraid of bleeding during the surgery or the animal will be sensitized during the surgery. So it's a very good site, especially in small animals to perform the surgery and open the abdomen from the area of the linea alba. As I said, it's a tendinous structure. There is lack of abundant blood and nerve supply. Therefore, it's less pain and bleeding consideration. Also, this tendinous structure provide a tensile strength. So, it's an optimal site for suture placement. Suture, when you do 
like you want to do a suture on this area if we do it in the muscle usually the suture in the muscle lead to a damage of the muscle but if we do it in the area of the linea alba linea alba and the connective tissue hold the suture better than muscles the last muscle we have is the rectus abdominal muscle and we can see this muscle here and we can see there is tendinous intersection which make a right angle with the linea alba these structures are the tendinous intersection which is the characteristics of the rectus abdominal muscle this muscle extend from the area of the sternum toward the area of the pubis as i said it's marked by the tendinous intersection these tendinous intersection run at the right angle with the linea alba these tendinous section break the muscle fascicles into segment and this is very important because here all the organ usually is pushed to this muscle the rectus abdominal muscle and the presence of these tendinous intersection increase the strength of that muscle see the muscle here this is the rectus abdominal muscle and we can see here this is the tendinous tendinous intersection as i said this tendinous intersection increase the strength of the muscle now we'll talk about the rectus sheath if you remember all of these muscles i said their insertion is in the linea alba which is the white line that extends from the xiphoid cartilage toward the pubic bone this aponeurosis surround this muscle the rectus abdominal muscle as a sandwich this connective tissue which surrounds the rectus abdominal muscle is called rectus sheath and this rectus sheath has two layers we have the layer that we can see it from outside if we open the skin which is the superficial layer and the another layer which is found just dorsal to the rectus abdominal muscle so the superficial as i said this is the one we can see it directly if we open the skin and usually this is formed by the aponeurosis of the abdominal muscle to understand it we have to understand this figure here we have the external we have the internal and we have the transverse abdominal muscle and here we have the rectus abdominal muscle the superficial layer the superficial layer in the cranial portion and the mid region is formed by the aponeurosis of the external and internal abdominal oblique muscle you can see here this is the external and here we have the internal both of them they have their aponeurosis in the superficial region whereas in the caudal portion is formed by the aponeurosis of the three external abdominal muscle you can see here this is the external the internal and the transverse all of them helped in the formation of the superficial layer of the rectus sheath for the deep layer again this is the one we can see it up there the cranial region is formed by the aponeurosis of the internal abdominal oblique and the transverse abdominal muscle this one here we can see the aponeurosis is divided into two portion one help in the formation of the superficial layer whereas the other portion help in the formation of the deep layer of the rectus abdominal muscle in the mid region 
we can see here only one muscle help in the formation of the deep layer which is the transverse abdominal muscle in the caudal portion there is no any muscle help in the formation of the deep layer so in the caudal portion there is no deep layer of the rectus sheath again the importance of the rectus sheath as i said it surround the rectus abdominal muscle so it's increase the strength of the rectus abdominal muscle also i said before that the linea alba is a preferred site to open the abdomen sometimes you could not open in the area of the linea alba maybe we use the area of the rectus sheath again this rectus sheath is consists of connective tissue so it can hold the suture better than the muscle the other thing less blood supply less nerve supply so there's no consideration uh, consideration for bleeding or pain in the animal now we talk about the inguinal region which is the area between the two legs the area here we have the inguinal canal okay and this inguinal canal as a canal it should have a beginning and end portion the beginning portion which is inside the abdomen which is the deep ring of the inguinal ring or the deep inguinal ring and from outside we have the superficial inguinal rings usually the superficial inguinal ring is a slit in the aponeurosis of the external abdominal oblique it's just like a small cut that we can see in the external abdominal oblique muscle and we have the deep inguinal which is inside the abdomen the boundaries of this deep inguinal cranial is the caudal border of the internal abdominal oblique caudolateral the inguinal ligament which is the caudal portion from the aponeurosis of the external abdominal oblique and medially by the lateral border of the rectus abdominal muscle as i said inguinal canal is a collapsed canal it's just not a regular canal it's collapsed between the deep and superficial inguinal ring the importance of this structure or the inguinal canal it's a passageway of the abdominal structure out of the abdomen As I said, the inguinal canal is a collapsed canal between the deep and superficial inguinal ring. The important is passageway of the abdominal structure outside of the abdomen. For example, in the male, it's a passageway for spermatic cord, uh, cord vaginal process, external abdominal uh, redundant artery, and vein, and the genital femoral nerve. Also, the testis will pass from and descend from the abdomen toward the area of the scrotum the importance of this area here sometimes there's a condition called inguinal hernia animal may get may hit may be hit at this area here okay and this will result in the increase of the area of the inguinal canal and this lead that some organs from the abdomen and especially the loop of the jejunum inside its place inside the abdomen will descend to the area of the scrotum and as i said this is usually because of a trauma the animal get a trauma or maybe sometime for natural uh, cause there's increase in the size in the inguinal rings and this is more common in human so here we have to perform a surgery and we have to return the organ toward or inside the abdomen then we have to reduce this area here which is the area of the superficial inguinal ring we have to reduce its its diameter to prevent the organ from displacing from inside the abdomen toward the inguinal canal. 
The last thing I want to talk about is the nerve supply of the abdominal region. We can see here we have the spinal nerve, the last nerve that found just caudal to the rib number 13 is called the spinal nerve of T13. Okay, this one here, and usually it have dorsal branch and we have the ventral branch and this ventral branch is divided into two portions, the medial portion and the lateral portion. After that, we have the L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. The L1, which is the cranial iliohypogastric nerve. Number two is the caudal iliohypogastric nerve. Number three, ilioinguina. And finally, number four, the lateral cutaneous femoral nerve. This nerve is very important to know because these nerves we have to uh, sedate or induce anesthesia during performing a surgery at this area here. So we have to know these nerves to be able to sedate or synthesize, uh, do an, uh, anesthesia this area here.